Now, ceramics is a word we use when we're talking about a whole class of inorganic compounds, oxides, carbides, nitrides, etc. We call them ceramics because they're manufactured with the same kind of process that pottery, real ceramics, are made. So that word that is used to describe pottery is used to describe these things that got nothing to do with that. A lot of times we say what they're not. They're not simple metals. They're compounds. They're not organic plastics and polymers. They're inorganic. So uh, this area of dealing with specialties of, of uh, inorganic compounds is what we call ceramics. I currently work on ceramic processing, so making a variety of different shapes from out of ceramic. Um, I like to tell my mom that we do pottery um, because it's kind of the same. There's a lot of similar correlations between the two. Um, although the shapes that we make are a lot fancier than say the bowls that you might have made in a pottery class. Other exciting things are going on are in energy generation. Titanium dioxide, for example, which is now being, it seems, used everywhere. It absorbs a photon of light. It'll react with water to produce hydrogen. Or you could use it uh, in a dye synthesized solar cell. So this is something that comes about because the titanium dioxide has just the right band gap to absorb that light and then do some little chemistry with it. In the nanoscale, that is. We're beginning to see fuel cells being used in a, in a practical basis. And one of the most important types of fuel cells uses solids solid conductors, solid oxide fuel cells have a zirconium dioxide material, very high temperature, very hard and rigid, but oxygen will go through it, oxygen ions will go through it, and we use that as an electrolyte. So that's becoming very important. Another thing I'm very excited about that's coming out of our research is direct digital manufacturing of ceramic cores and now we're setting up, a, or the latest company we're setting up, is to manufacture uh, the molds to make the nickel alloy blades. Inside the turbine blade, uh, it's very intricate cooling passages, and that's made during the metal casting process with the ceramic core, directly from computer files, using the kind of shapes that you cannot otherwise get. That's the 3D printing method. We've been working on that for 20 years. Yeah. When you look at the history of manufacturing, a lot of manufacturing processes have looked at how do we make a large number of mass-produced parts. But sort of the goal now of where manufacturing is going is it's, they're looking at how do we make a large, how, how do we do mass production of customized parts. But it only works because I am in material science. The material is a ceramic. The application is casting metals. It works because of photopolymerization of polymers. And if I were still a ceramic engineer, I couldn't have done it. If I were a metallurgist, I wouldn't know anything about it. If I were a polymer person, couldn't have done it. But because I know all three, I was able to do this. And this is an example of the synergy of learning about all those chapters in the Introduction to Material Science book, not just one of them.